Okay, how's it going everybody? Uh, my name is Will Hubbard, this is Caleb Miller, Shane Faulkner. Uh, our capstone project was to uh, design and construct a wind tunnel for use in uh, heat loss experiments. So uh, the project goals was we were going to design and build a wind tunnel uh, system that would provide a controlled environment for uh, future heat transfer experiments. Uh, we wanted to achieve a wide range of breathing velocities, so we'll uh, be able to vary the velocity uh, inside the fan tunnel. And we wanted to achieve a flat velocity profile, so everything uh, flowing <coughs> through the tunnel would be uh, about the same. So uh, our objective was to, uh, like I said, design and build a wind tunnel that can be used for future heat loss experiments uh, related to agricultural mechanization. <coughs> Um, our, some of our theory and background that we use, uh, we use general f uh, fluid flow equations. These included uh, Q equals VA. Uh, we also had <coughs> friction loss involved in there. Uh, we use data for fan performance. Uh, we also had velocity profiles, uh, including free spring velocity. And uh, we also applied uh, inlet theory. All right, this is starting the design stage when we originally were, was presented the problem. Um, the first top left picture is just setting the structural ribs that we would use at 2 foot on center. We set the tunnel body at 16 foot long. Um, this is just showing the face of one of the ribs. These red little L's or gussets is for the support of the ribs. And then that middle picture was our first idea, our first design of a framing system where as you'll see Shortly, we altered that a little bit. Alright, this is started first with building the ribs. This is a jig that we set up. We took and checked, double checked, made sure that these outside angles were 90. Then come in with our pre cut 2x4s, um, clamping them in so that we ensured that that inside angle was going to be 90. And then took these gussets and applied liquid nail and screwed them in. Alright, uh, painting, the whole thing is this grayish blue color. We've got two pictures that seem almost identical, but that's just to show that we have two coats of paint on everything. Um, and it was just simply uh, latex porch and floor paint. Alright, um, now getting into the main tunnel body. Um, when we built it, we built it into two, two halves because our plywood are in 4x8 sheets. Um, we originally did not Fill it, or did not place a rib on two of the ends for whenever we were going to join them together. But you can see here, the top left, we ended up putting two ribs on before we attached them, just so we would have something to clamp onto to uh, ensure that it, it was tight and flush and everything. Um, this is, we were putting on the two, we have two bag frames. This is two stacked on top of each other. Put the first one on glue screwed it to the ribs, put the second one on, glue screwed it to the first one. And then over here we've got four casters that hold 350 pounds a piece, ready to somewhere around there. And we just went ahead and added another section of a two by eight right here just to add a little more height from the ground. All right, this is, this is our air straightener. It's on the inlet side of the tunnel. And what it does, all, as you can see the left picture, it's over 45,000 straws. It was a it was a pretty big ordeal putting them all in there. You put them in, you sit, let them sit, you rock it, they all shift down. You have to put in a couple thousand more. Um, but what this does <laughs> is... Uh, and then you drop them to the floor, right? <laughs> and then uh, what this does is it creates a static pressure for the system, which is the resistance that the fan is seeing. Um, and then it's also, it was also used for creating an even distribution, like Will said, and then to create a laminar flow through the tunnel so that whenever we went for our velocity profiles, we were trying to ensure a more uniform laminar flow versus the turbulent. And this is it completed, and um, it's got uh, porch screening on both sides, and then we just put a cleaned up edge on the outside so that you can see all the staples and everything. Uh, here we begin construction of our uh, fan housing. Um, as you can see here, this is the main. This is a main frame uh, for the back side. That's where our uh, largest fan will be held in that area. And we have a two by four here to uh, catch most of the load. Hit it there. You can see uh, most of the box completed here. We have it stacked on three two by eights, just like our fans, so that we have the same height, use the same casters. 
these holes drilled out here for our six smaller fans. We have three on each side. Uh, the top and bottom fans are our lowest flow, and then the middle two are our next step up. Um, this is another picture here where you can see the actual frame on the back connected in, and you can see what it pretty much looks like on the inside. Um, this is the next step. Uh, this actually has our gusset in here, our shutter in here, and this is where our largest fan will go. Again, this is another completion where after we painted it. Um, and here you can see we installed our, our smaller fans, our six fans in here. This is the completion of the fan housing. This is our largest fan. Our smaller fans run off of this circuit box. We have two 15 amp breakers. These are each on separate circuits, drawing about four amps total off of this off of these two circuits. This is our largest fan circuit box, um, drawing about three amps running amps off of here, giving us about a total of seven running amps. This here is a voltage regulator, um, and we we put in two complete circuits for these. So we can plug them up on two, hopefully two different circuits in the building so that we wouldn't, when we did start up these fans, we wouldn't see any, uh, trip any breakers in the building. Next, you can see we have a viewing uh, display in so, so we can see inside the tunnel for any testing, sub, or testing apparatuses that go inside. Um, here, you can see these green dots. There's actually holes drilled inside of the, uh, in the wall of the wind tunnel, um, so we can take velocity readings and view the profile, the airflow profile inside the wind tunnel. The doors are also there. They yeah. they come on and off. We can yeah. take those on. They got wing wing nuts. You can take them on so you can get in. To for in the future, you can set in your testing material. This is our manometer. It tests uh, static pressure drop inside and outside of the wind tunnel or between the wind inside and outside of the wind tunnel. You can see here this is our high side and it's just protected between these two ribs. And this is our low side here and those are just brass fittings with a hose barb and that hose runs to our manometer right there. So this is our first testing stage. Um, those green stoppers that you saw running along the side, there's three on the top right above that there's one right in the center. We set our anemometer down to about you know 24 inches, about halfway in down, so that we could start plotting different um, velocities based on what static pressures we were seeing. The, the first, the first point down here was merely the four smallest 500 feet a minute uh, fans. Then the next one is once we kick on the two 800 that are in the middle, and then there's a, there's a big gap between this next point, and that's from struggling with the actual fan design and opening the shutter itself. We weren't able to really get accurate readings until this stage because that's when it was fully open and we were getting that um, uniform airspeed. And this is the next one, the free stream velocity. Um, we've got three, three velocities. We've got low, medium, high. The, the idea with free stream velocity is we've got it plotted on distance from the bottom and then your velocity. So it's as you increase your distance from either the, well, we did it from the bottom, but it's from the side of the tunnel itself, your air speeds are going to increase until it reaches a flat, uniform free stream theoretically before it dives back off at the top and that's just simply for or created by drafts and things like that inside the tunnel. Um, these numbers are the total flow at these velocities. Um, our highest would be about 6,250. Um, we originally estimated around 10,000 or so is what we should be getting and that is just directly related back to the fan itself and the design and having to fight the static pressures that we were seeing. This is, this is our 24 inch fan um, data. 
we got this from the company and um, what it's, basically what it's showing is that that total Q of 6200 was at our what was that static pressure? 0.1258 yeah. alright, 0.1258 so you're at, you know, well that's way up here but this fan, I mean you're you're already diving off way back here. So all of these, we, we <coughs> didn't get a wide range of static pressures simply because this fan, once you started reaching higher and higher static pressures, it's just the fan itself was dying off and uh, not providing us with the speeds that we were hoping. Okay, so our budget, our original budget, uh, as presented in our last presentation, was about um, a little under $7,000. But uh, we actually came in with uh, forty-three hundred dollars, so that was uh, that was good. Um, <clears throat> some of the feature work we have, uh, we talked about the shutter design. Uh, the, really, the way the shutter works here is it, um, <clears throat> it's not optimal because we can't get it open. To uh, it takes a long time to get it built up to where it will actually open, so we can get those readings. So we can't actually use um, part of the uh, variable rate drive because we can't get readings until it gets open when it's past the top part. Uh, also, we talked about getting a fan upgrade. So we can um, improve our airflows, <clears throat> try to get it up maybe that 10,000 CFM. And then um, also the, the reason we built um, the wind tunnel is so we can have that uh, heat transfer um, test and run those heat loss experiments. So um, that apparatus will need to be built and installed so it can be used for the future. So uh, in conclusion, uh, we have successfully built the wind tunnel. It is fully operational. Uh, we've successfully established the uh, proper velocity profile for the tunnel. Uh, it can achieve uh, a mean velocity range from 103 to 406 uh, feet per minute and, um, <clears throat> and the tunnel can now be used for conducting those future heat loss uh, experiments related to agricultural organization. So those are some of our references. And, um, we just want to give a special thanks to Dr. Chastain, the advisor. He really helped us out throughout the entire project. You know, there's a a lot of the theories and concepts that we were seeing and we really did not realize that it was going to be as in-depth as it was. And also, Jonathan Fox, who is a current AgMAC student, he's not in the CI group. He just, you know, likes working with his hands and ended up giving us, you know, a lot of help. Um, Cody Gaskey and Jake Abbott are two CI students. Ben McGrath, he helped Toad longer. We're going to start off by cutting on our minimum flow fans. Uh, these are our smallest. This provides our, our, our lowest flow. <laughs> right. Now we got we got our minimum flow here. These doors on the side they actually prevent these fans from pulling air in through that outlet. Um, and also that's what the, uh, the the shutters for on the inside. Um, Y'all want to go ahead and take those off? Go. We're gonna cut on our next set. Um, this is a medium set of flow. You want to you want to talk about the air velocity a little bit? Uh, and the monitor. Show one. Show one. Show one. Show one. And go up. Let's come around this way and see how long it's going. You want to cut the middle one back off?
get around that stable point, there's a hold button. You get that 10, or two, actually hit 20 times and then you brought us 10 points. That's what we said earlier. And then we hit 100. And you hold the hold button down and it'll flash and give you an average rating of the velocity you just took. And that's what we need to create our free string velocity. Again, this is going to end the graph. Okay, uh, next we're going to start with some big fans. Before I do that though, if y'all recall that graph back in our presentation where we had a flow over static pressure drop, we had two points in the center that were very opposite. They were very, a large difference in points. And when I cut on this fan, you'll understand why. If you go back here and look, you'll see that it takes a while before the helmet shutter, the shutter actually opens up and allows flow to come through the fan. So right now this is our voltage, this is the voltage regulator right now the thing is off with no pressure. This is that minimum. And you can see we're getting very many very thick. You can see here, it takes a while for the thing to build up. But you can still see those gusses aren't close to you know, they're pretty close. It takes almost, they barely open a little bit when we're at medium voltage. We put this dash on our voltage regulator to show that at this point, you'll see that the gust is up enough, just, just enough to start getting some blood. That sound that you're hearing is the bearing of the harmonic balance. The you can see there, the shutter is finally opened up. Now we're getting some flow out of the fan. And I'll just go ahead and take it up the max power now. So, that's where we're getting a lot of walls. We get rid of the shutter and we can go on the floor. It's still down there. somebody on both sides if you have a heavy material and you can set it up in there. 